Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to be trying out some thermal paste and trying to cool down our GPU using Gelid's GC Extreme. Is it any good? Let's find out. Okay, so in today's video we're going to be testing uh, Gelid's GC Extreme thermal paste. It gets uh, pretty decent reviews and they did send me some to try, which uh, I have been using in various coolers over the uh, last couple of months. And actually does seem to be pretty decent. So what I figured I'd do is see if it can do anything for my trusty old 1650 Super, which is uh, showing its age a little bit and probably could do with some new thermal paste. So in today's video, I'm going to take the graphics card apart, so I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to apply some Gelid GC Extreme, forgot what it's called. And then we'll do some more testing and see what it comes out, see if it actually makes much difference, see if we can improve our boost clocks and all those kinds of usual things that you'd expect to see with uh, a premium paste. So, first of all, let's take the graphics card out. Okay, so we've got our graphics card removed, which is here. This is the Zotac 1650 Super GTX. Uh, if you want to know how to take a graphics card out, then we have done a video previously, which you can check out up here. But realistically, if you're struggling to take a graphics card out, the next part you probably shouldn't get involved with. But Again, entirely up to you, but you have been warned. So let's take this thing apart. Okay, so here we have our graphics card. Now, what we're gonna to need to do in this particular version is to remove four screws. So we've got one here, one here, one here, one here. These two are separate for the VRM heatsink, which uh, we're actually gonna leave those as they are at the moment because they require thermal pads. Uh, we will be doing a video, a follow-up with thermal pads. So if you wanna see how that goes, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell notification and all that kind of YouTube jazz. But let's get on with what we're trying to do today. So let's take these uh, screws out. Now, when you're removing these, you can pretty much do them in any order you want to. There isn't actually a tremendous amount of tension actually on the graphics card itself. So don't be uh, too concerned. When you're putting them back in, it does pay to put them in a crisscross method, just so the paste which you put on actually uh, spreads evenly and securely. So that's the four screws out. That's all we need to do. Now we can actually separate the graphics card, which you want to do quite gently, because it may well be stuck together pretty well. And that one's come apart quite easily. So if we flip this round, so you can see what is going on here. So we've got the two real key elements, as you can hopefully see. So we've got the heat sink here, which we need to clean up. And we've got the GPU here. Now, as you can see, this has actually been repasted at some point. The paste is actually relatively, uh, relatively good condition, but we're still going to clean it off and we'll replace it with some of the Gelid. So this is the Gelid GC Extreme, as you can see. And it actually gets a pretty good rep, this stuff. This is the 3.5 gram container, or syringe, whatever you want to call it. And this costs around about eight or nine pounds here in the UK. So it's uh, by no means a budget compound, but certainly seems to be pretty decent. So let's get the uh, items cleaned up. All we're gonna do is use some tissue paper. You can, if you want to, use some isopropyl alcohol for the real purists out there, but alternatively, if you haven't got anything like that, then just anything with the high alcohol content, uh, even things like aftershave, that kind of thing, can be used and actually do work out quite well. So remove the excess. If you fold over your paper towel as you go, saves you wasting a ton. And yeah, that's, uh, that's not too bad at all. So now is the GPU section. Now with this, you wanna be a little bit more careful because there are these tiny little bits around the outside edge, which are all, uh, raised little electrodes and you don't want to damage those so just be careful and just wipe this off again fold over your towels try not to get too much of it actually onto the gpu die if you can possibly help it just in case that the previous compound was in any way thermally conductive so what i might do is actually get some compound cleaner or some electrical contact cleaner and give that a quick blast over because i'm not entirely sure what that previous paste was so we're going to use some of this. This is uh, Wynn's Electrical Contact Cleaner. I'm actually just going to spray a little bit on the tissue. And that should uh, break down any of the existing compound. So hopefully you can see that now. Made a bit of a mess. As long as we get the um, majority of it off, we should be absolutely fine. You can if you want to. Some of it which is on the sides, which is a little bit trickier to get to. You can do if you want to remove a lot in one go. Just get a flat screwdriver. And sometimes you can just chip it off the side. 
this stuff's pretty gloopy so that's not going to touch that but if it's uh, stuck on really well then you can just give that a wipe over See that is uh, that is evaporating as we do it, and as you can see, that's uh, that's pretty decent. Now it's pretty clean. Looks okay. I'm a little bit concerned about the previous thermal paste. That is um, one of the concerns when you're buying thermal paste. Try and get stuff which is, or at least says on there, that it is not conductive or capacitive, because that can end up giving you a whole world of hurt. Which uh, if I get some of the cheaper stuff, which I've got. So this stuff is uh, slightly cheaper stuff. This is thermal grease. This is HY710. Now, as you can see, it does say, uh, apply to CPU, VJ, LED, chipset, and other PC components. Low thermal resistance, high conductivity for heat transfer. Uh, compliance, thermal conductivity and thermal resistance is listed on there. But it doesn't say if it actually is electrically conductive so you have to be a bit careful with that so I'm not too sure if anyone's used this before and they know if it is conductive or not I think this is actually probably what I used on there before maybe I shouldn't have done there is a QR code I could probably have a look and see what the details are but anyway I'm digressing so that is our GPU cleaned up and uh, we know that's nice and clean now so we can get on and use some of our Gelid GC Extreme so there are various methods of employing this paste uh, you can just do a little blob, you can spread it, etc. But this is actually uh, not conductive electrically. So if you do put a little bit too much on, it isn't a problem. Now you could, if you want to, just do a, a little line like that. So about that kind of much. That probably would be sufficient. I think that is probably uh, a decent amount. I'll spin it around a little bit so you can get a better idea. So there we go. I think that is probably enough. Now you could, if you want to, use um, some sort of spreader. There is actually a spreader which comes included with this, but I find it a little bit gloopy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put on a glove and I'm actually gonna spread it out into a very, very thin layer across the entire thing. And then possibly put another little dollop actually in the center once I'm done. So I'm gonna grab a glove a minute and then we'll do that. Okay, so there we go. I've uh, done that off camera so as not to trigger, to trigger too many people. As you can see, the actual the paste itself is actually quite thick. Um, it's not that easy to spread around, if I'm completely honest with you. So I would say I'd give it some less points for spreadability. So if you're into just putting a dollop on and letting it spread itself out underneath pressure, then I think this is gonna be absolutely fine for you. If you're one of those people that likes to spread it out, then uh, possibly go for a slightly lower viscosity. It almost feels like it's um, some kind of silicon in maybe some kind of uh, suspension fluid. It's, a, it's quite an unusual texture. But anyway, it's done, and all of that will flatten out once the GPU is put back together. So we've got no worries there, there's plenty on there. Um, I wouldn't say there's too much, and I wouldn't say there's too little. I'd say it's probably about right by the time it spreads out. Normally, if you've done this a few times, you can actually tell when it actually splashes out a little bit. You can see what it's like. So now we need to put it all back together which is uh, essentially just the reverse of what we've done already. So all we need to do is to line up the holes that we got here with those holes there. Obviously, if you want to, you can replace your thermal pad, the sponge on the side, if you're not too sure which size you need. Basically, the easiest thing to do is to just grab yourself uh, like one of these little rulers, which has got a magnet on the end. So grab yourself a little ruler and literally just put it by the side of your RAM and of your RAM thermal pads. And you can measure it, see what it is, and then you can uh, get it on eBay or get it on Amazon, whatever. Actually, generally do some thermal pads. Uh, I think this one for this particular card is one and a half, maybe possibly even two mil. Uh, I've currently only got the, the one mil ones. Otherwise I would have replaced that as well, but we can do that another time. The one mil ones are perfect for EVGA cards. EVGA cards generally across the board use uh, one mil pads apart from some of their high-end 
cards, the extremely high-end cards, which do tend to use 1.25, but generally should be fine either way. Anyway, that's enough of that. So let's flip the card back over. And literally all we need to do is just kind of line up, line up the, uh, the holes. It's actually quite difficult for me to see. So get one lined up in one corner and look through and you should find that they all match up. So if I lift up a little bit, sometimes having a light shine underneath it makes it a little bit easier. As you can see there, got the, uh, you can just about see the screw holes lined up. So that's pretty much bang on. You don't really want to be twisting and turning this thing too much when you've actually got it in place because that's just going to smear your paste around. And that is something you definitely don't want to do. So now what we need to do is to put the screws back in. And to do that, just give it a couple of turns just to get it started. And do that in opposing corners. And that way then you should, in theory, squish out the uh, the paste a little bit more evenly. Although saying that after a couple of runs in Fire Strike or Time Spy or whatever case may be, generally that's going to uh, flatten out for you. Nice bit of heat. That's what you want to get through the graphics card after you've done this. Nice bit of heat. Then let it go through a cooling cycle and then let it heat up again. And then after you've done that a couple of times, then you should find that it spreads out nicely. And eventually you'll find that your thermal temperatures will be much better. The first run is always a little bit of a nightmare. So there we go, that's the screws back in. So now we, all we need to do is to stick the card back into the PC and uh, yeah, make sure the fans spin, make sure there's no wires or anything stopping the fan spinning, but that's pretty much it. We're ready to go. So I'm going to stick this back in the PC and do some tests. Okay, so we're back and we've done the testing and uh, long story short, yes. Jellyhead's GC Extreme does the business. It's actually considerably better than the previous paste that was on the card. So we've got some improvements and I'll put some PowerPoints up now so you can see the uh, details. I'll read them off my old fashioned diary here, which I've made my notes in. So the first one and actually probably the best thing is the temperature. So the temperature starts off, the lowest temperature recorded on both actually was the same, so no surprises there. That is pretty much the lowest point that the case gets to. Now this is in a 22 degree ambient room and is in the Colink Sisdel case, which uh, hopefully you can see behind me. It does a really good job of cooling anyway, so yeah, 31 degrees was the lowest temperature in both pastes, so uh, equal there. But when it got interesting is under the full load. Now the full load, with the stock paste was 78 degrees C, which uh, yeah, is getting a little bit toasty. But with the Jed, we managed to drop that a whopping six degrees, which is actually fantastic because the paste that was on there wasn't actually that old anyway. So we dropped that down to about 72 degrees. So six degrees off the temperature, definitely an improvement in my book and well worth doing. So moving on to the frequencies. Now, obviously with Nvidia graphics cards and most things these days, if the temperatures are better, then it can boost higher. Now the highest recorded megahertz on the GPU core with the standard stock paste actually was a pretty decent 1920 megahertz, which I thought was pretty acceptable and certainly is boosting higher than what the manufacturer recommends. But we can do better than that. And we did with the GC Extreme and we managed to get that up to a whopping 2070 megahertz. So that is a sizable jump. So we've got about an extra 150 megahertz out of the card, which uh, actually if you take into consideration the percentages, that's a good 10% or more. So pretty impressive so far. But obviously that is only tangible if it works out whilst you're playing games or doing benchmarks. Now in the Time Spy benchmark, which is a very popular benchmark, we actually got some pretty decent results there also with a increase of around about 200 points, which again, is not to be sniffed at. So we started out with the standard stock cooling paste, which was around about 4,652, I believe it was. But after changing the paste and running it again with the GC Extreme, then we managed to get a really good result of 4,864 points. So that's just a smidge over 200 points extra. Again, extra performance just to be had. And certainly for the cost of a small syringe of thermal paste, definitely worth doing. So overall, we got great results. Now, obviously it would be much better if we could test this with other thermal compounds as well, such as Arctic MX4, etc. Cryonol Grizzly, all those kinds of things, just see if there is a noticeable difference between those higher performance paste. But certainly if you've got the stock setup on your graphics card and you want to give the paste a refresh or maybe just give your GPU a little bit of an extra boost, then uh, yeah, I can certainly recommend the GC Extreme from Gelid. 
So that's going to wrap this one up. If you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to put them in the comments section below. And obviously don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the chime notification so you'll be notified of future video releases. But that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.